A lot of people are a bit confused about the moguls. Um, one reason is that they might be Americans and they might not say mogul. I say mogul, M-O-G-H-U-L, mogul. Uh, but I think uh, the internet seems to have decided that the proper spelling is now mugal, M-U-G-H-A-L. Other spellings are available. Well, whichever you prefer, uh, fine. I'm going to say mogul, though, because that's what I'm used to. And in, in English, we say, we talk about a movie mogul. And I think that's in, in the American vernacular as well. But maybe they say movie mugal. I don't know. Famously known as the Mughal Empire. That answers that. What a warlike lot they were. Quite extraordinary. Um, in common with the, the, the Turks and others of that uh, ilk, whenever the ruler died, rule passed to whoever was strongest, probably one of his sons, who, who wants to take over next. And there'd be a civil war. Every time a ruler died, there was another civil war. And <clears throat> the various Maharajas and so forth of India were, were, before the British arrived and created the Pax Britannica, which was, if you like, a real thing, um, they were fighting each other a huge amount. And one book uh, I read some while ago, I'm not entirely sure of what it was basing this on, but it estimated um, that they were spending 85% of their income fighting each other. Yep, they were a very warlike lot. And so uh, obviously they're going to need soldiers and the soldiers are going to need armour. To see how far they took plated mail, here's an example, a very late example, from the province of Sindh in northwest India. And you'll see that it's more plate than mail. I'm not wild about this face guard, though. It looks as though it would just flop around annoyingly. And what if someone just punched you on the nose? This is what it looks like from a distance. Quite sleek, really. Rather a practical-looking gauntlet there. And uh, you see it's linked in permanently with the van brace. And the legs. Bit of a hodgepodge, but that would keep you safe from most things. Possibly not muskets, though, which unfortunately did exist. Butted mail. Oh, there's no such thing as authentic butted mail. Well, yes, actually there is, and here's a suit of it. And you can see that woven into the pattern are prayers in bronze links. So, they'll keep you safe. And all people in the past were tiny. Nope, the guy who wore this was huge. You may marvel at the fact that I am touching this armour with my bare hands, but surely that's just... It's, you, you, that's a priceless artefact. You can't do that. It might go rusty and so forth. Well... I don't want to be too precious about it. I have worn this outdoors and I do want to you know, get some use out of it. Uh, this particular suit has been used by Mike Lodes in some of his videos. If you uh, watch him in one of his uh, horse archery videos, he's galloping along rather impressively uh, wearing this and twanging arrows, though uh, you'll see that he's got the uh, sleeves tied back because the sleeves were way too long for him. Um, but the last time this was used in what you might think of as an historical context was for the Delhi Durba of 1903. Yes, you remember that one, don't you? The 1903 one. That was when uh, King Edward VII ascended to the throne of England and whilst he was at it, he became Emperor of India. And they threw a massive Durba for him, which unfortunately he didn't attend. But never mind, someone went to, to represent him. And it was by all accounts the most Fabulous of all the Durbas, attended by vast numbers of people and involving huge numbers of troops and magnificent uniforms and fabulously uh, bedecked elephants with, with howders and parasols and paint and gilding and candelabra on their tusks and the whole bit. And for that occasion, um, a number of repairs probably were made for this. Here you could see one of the original fittings on the front and lower down you could see that these have been repaired at some point in the past. So that little bit on the end there could be 1903 Delhi Durba uh, vintage. You'll also notice that this fitting here isn't the same size as the others in the row. So my guess is that that's been taken from another suit of armour and uh, cannibalised and uh, used for repairs. Now I thought it would be instructive if I showed you what the inside of this looked like. Uh, so if I open it up for you, we can see those platelets that go go down my back and from the inside you can see very definitely there isn't mail underneath them and there are just three rows of mail in between one row each side linking into the platelets and one row in the middle linking the mail to the mail now a lot of people are bound to be wondering how much this weighs it's the sort of question that people always ask about armor well um, i got this uh, weighing scale from a, uh, a shop called everything's a pound and according to it this weighs about 24 pounds uh, but if you don't like that expressed in weight uh, you can say uh, that it's 11 kilos although looking um, at other suits uh, i'm not always sure if they mean just the hauberk or whether they're adding in other bits maybe the helmet and so forth but 13 kilos 29 pounds seems to be uh, more typically quoted uh, 
uh, in catalogues for museums and the like. Um, so um, I can definitely feel that I'm wearing it and I can uh, definitely feel that um, the guy who owned it uh, had smaller shoulders than mine. My shoulders are rather uh, cramped in this. I don't have excellent movement. Um, let's not forget that I'm just wearing a woolen tunic and he would have had a, a probably a thicker padded tunic underneath this, even in the summer heat of India. Now, if I show you some of the very fine mail from the skirt at the bottom and then take that up and put it next to the mail from the, from the chest, you'll see the tremendous contrast there in these two sizes of mail. It's certainly mobile. The mail of the sleeves, of course, does not interfere with movement at all. I do remember in my childhood reading a book uh, which said that Vikings used to fight with straight arms because they had mail sleeves. Uh, no, mail does not <laughs> require you to uh, fight with straight arms. Um, the protective power of the plate was presumably greater than the mail, otherwise why would they have put plates in the mail? Other than, you know, the fact that, uh, you yeah, they're rather good looking. Um, but I, I, th this um, plate, though, is quite thin. Now, one thing that's so difficult to find that even I had trouble and I knew what it was and where to look for it, uh, it's just there. Can you just see punched into the front loads and loads and loads of little holes that make a mysterious symbol? I have no idea what this means. But if anyone can tell me what that is, well, I'd be jolly grateful and I'd tell everyone. Another thing I can show you is a change in the direction of the mail. So this is the inside of the back, this is the front, and these are the side plates. And going up between the side plates, there is this mail here, and you'll see that it comes to a hiatus here, and the direction of grain in the mail changes. Because this here, this is the mail that, that forms that long tapering triangle that is on the underside of the sleeve that ends somewhere just beyond the elbow. You see, there are some fairly crude repairs that have been made to the insides of the plates. They don't show much on the outside. There were some very crude repairs to the mail as well, but I've replaced those with my own superior, uh, I think, I hope, uh, repairs. This is the very chunky mail of the chest. And here we see that flap which sticks up protecting the back of the neck, which I tried to show you earlier. And right in the very, very corners, there are, again, solid, not riveted rings. And look how incredibly worn that one is. It's it's. It's very, very delicate now. I wouldn't want to put much strain on that. Written on the inside, you'll see that there are inscriptions, and they're in a few different languages. Now, getting inscriptions like this translated uh, can be very expensive and is often, I'm told, very disappointing. Uh, they very often end up saying something like, you know Allah, he's really great. Well, yeah, I sort of knew that Allah was great already. Um, but if anyone uh, can help me with these translations, that would be wonderful. Look at the state of my fingers now. I've been handling it for just a while. And <laughs> look at the state of these white gloves that I use for handling it uh, when I'm being more careful. After making this video, I'll be giving it a bit of a clean and rubbing it over with Renaissance wax that should protect it against moisture and other, other potential nasties. I am its custodian and I do intend to look after it. <laughs> Dindy Bear!